So this is my new float assembly. I had this little thing before, um, but this little thing just wasn't enough. Well, first of all, I had a problem with it like wobbling left and right, which was an issue. And also, it's only one float, which ultimately is a problem. I had alarm when it was low, so I went to fill it, and then I forgot I was filling it and almost flooded everything. I literally caught it as the water was at the top of the sump. Of course, that's a bit of a problem with a saltwater tank like this because that means that um, uh, I might am basically lowering my salinity when I drain it. So I ended up dumping some water into here and then adding salt into here. So this water is really salty. And then I'll supplement the tank with this water over the next few days to get the salt level to stabilize. Although I think it's pretty good. Um, another thing I did is I mounted the uh, control screen for the apex on the door there. I don't even have one of those on my big tank, but on this tank, I don't always have my laptop right next to it or something, so I thought it'd be nice to have. So, it's on there. Another new thing is the moonlights. So if you see up there, uh, those two little LEDs mounted to the gooseneck are the moonlights for the uh, for the Apex Lunar Module, whatever it's called. And uh, right now it's, they're on with the Kessel as well, but uh, for a while it'll just be the moonlights. It can actually follow the lunar cycle, but... I don't have it doing that right now because it's kind of weird, like the lunar cycle, sometimes the moon is out in the middle of the day and having those blue lights on in the middle of the day seems to make absolutely no sense to me. So, because the Kessel's already on and the Kessel's already very blue, you're not even going to see them. I mean, almost that's almost how it is right now. It's like you're seeing the Kessel and you're not even seeing those things. They're being completely washed out. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to get this mounted and... Uh, set it up I actually set it up so that this one when it's up it's closed and this one when it's down it's closed that way the closed state is the state both of these should be in by default and that means if like a wire got cut or if somehow this came disconnected see these are disconnected with eighth inch connectors here um, if those came disconnected then I would get an alarm because it's expecting them to be closed so that's what I hope anyway, we'll see. I, uh, I also zip tied the wire down here so it doesn't hit the float. The wire tendency to wanna jump up. So now that these are all zip tied down. Um, yeah, so this is similar to my float mount for the tank upstairs if you've ever seen the video of that one. The only difference is this one's magnetic with these magnets here and then these. <laughs> so. Yeah, we'll see how this uh, see how this does here. Let's see if I can just put it in on video. I'm trying to get these cords. There we go. Okay. The tricky part is getting the magnets on there. Do is kind of hold it by the cord and then get the one magnet on. And then boom. <laughs> that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Let's see if I can get the camera on there and show you what it's did. Behind that wire, of course the wire is in the way. But you can see uh, that's the wire that goes home. But yeah, the other magnet's right there. It's just hard to see it. It's right beside there. But yeah, that's being held on there. And you can see that's the level it sits at. This is so hard to get camera shot of. <laughs> but um, yeah, 
me just level it out. I mean, it still could be off level, but it's easy to sort of adjust it now, and it's it's not going to move around nearly as much as that other one. Once it's set, it's a little more in place than the other one was, just because this thing could just rock so easy with the two magnets. It's much less of a problem, although I, the extra weight of the whole thing that's holding up does sort of mean that it's not quite as strong as you'd think, but it still works pretty good. All right, let's get a shot from this angle here. So yeah, I mean, it's looking pretty good. Let me just double check it. It's hard to see because this tube is in the way, but it looks pretty good to me. Okay, good. All the switches can move freely. So now, what I want to do, since I made it so, um, both of them are uh, closed in their default state. So what I want to do now First, I want to rename switch level. We're going to call the switch level L for low. What the heck? Oh, there we go. Caps lock was on. Of course, caps lock is on. And then I want to rename the other one. This one, just switch level high. Okay. And the other thing I need to do is my email alarms if water level, if water low. Okay, yeah, so I made a virtual outlet. called water low and see right now it thinks it's on because I had this previously set to be when it's closed but since I just flipped the float around the other way now this should be open okay water low off alright now sound alarm so warning, if water low on, then on. Now the one I want to add, so I really should add a virtual outlet and add a water high. Alright, so let's do that. Add a virtual outlet, water. Actually, you know what else I want to do is I'd like this one to be, I like the low first. Of course, now they're out of order from how they're actually wired, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> they're already out of order from how they're wired anyway, because the feed button is actually here. So, it's easier just to rearrange them than worry about having it all perfect. Alright, so water low, is, is, if switch level low is open, then water low is on. So for water high, I want the same thing, except I want it to be switch level high open then on. Now, the other thing I want to do is set these alarms up. So the warning alarm is set to go off when water low is on. And so I want the 
alarm to go off when water high is on. What I really should do is take a look at my settings from my other tank because in this tank I have a rule that says if switch is on but if feed is on then off yeah that's what I want so Put water high. Wait, no, I don't want that in the alert config. I want that in the water high config. There we go. That basically means it's not going to alarm when I press the feed button. Because generally, when I'm doing the feed button, um, the, sump, the pumps turn off, so the sump level is going to raise. That's okay if the pumps are off. If the pumps are on though, and the water level is uh, high, then yeah, we got a problem. And generally, if I'm doing maintenance, I'll force the feed button on, and then it'll just stay on, and thus everything should uh, stay off and not alarm. <laughs> so let's test this now. Uh, actually, before I do that. I'll put water low, set the email alarms up, water high, alright, so now, I'm going to just do this the old fashioned way, and flip the switches, my, my hand. This one off. <laughs> and you can see water high is on, the alarm is on. Now let the switch down. And now it's all off. Alright, so the next test is the water level, the water low. All right, and that worked. Oh yeah, there it goes, water low, warning. And let's let go. Uh, it should all clear. Excellent. Let's see, skimmers closed, feed is off, I haven't tested the feed button. Oh, that works, <laughs> although I don't want it to actually do that. Alright, turn it back on again. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I think we're, we're pretty much good here. So yeah, here's that the controller here. You can see there's all kind of stuff you can do in here. But you can control all the outlets and stuff right here. So you can do similar stuff that you can do from the web page, but it's a lot more annoying. I more just like it because you get that nice readout right there. You can actually customize what it shows. You get four screens of of stuff that you can make it display. But yeah, I like uh, I like that one. Anyway. This is all working, and I've now used uh, 
five of the six pin, uh, things on my breakout box there. You can see the breakout box off in the little distance there. But yeah, five of the six things are now used. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. Um, man, it's a wiring nightmare in here. Oh, the skimmer just kicked back on. You can see that squeegee. It's got some dirt on that squeegee, man. That squeegee really does its thing. It's crazy. So I've been trying to figure out, get this thing tuned, and I think it does need to raise a little more from where I had it. But um, so what I've read is you really want the white bubbles to come up halfway. But since this thing is not fully broken in, I guess you call it, um, I'm letting it run a little low. And um, it's okay because the neck cleaner cleans it up pretty good. But um, yeah, I'm running it low. Although what I should do is test the skimmer shutoff switch because I moved everything around. And when I do that, it has a tendency to screw with it. So yeah, let's do that. Hey, look, the... Uh, thing just kicked on. The cleaner. Perfect timing, huh? It kicks on four times a day and I just so happen to be recording it while it's cleaning it. There, go figure, right? Alright, so you can see that water's getting a little yellow in there. Oh, I need to dial the venturi down, I guess. Oh, look, there goes the uh, suave. This thing is closed all the way. It's taking a little while to fill up, though. Oh, there it goes. goes it kicked off so yeah that's working I've had issues with this air hose leaking the, for the sensor I'm not gonna drain all the water from the skimmer I'm just gonna drain until it gets to the bottom most of the water was clean it's just really at the bottom where there's some gunk but most of this is just water because it really hasn't been running all right the gunk was about to come out so I'm just going to leave it there. So this should turn back on by itself. But let's put it at a more reasonable level. And let the Venturi uh, open again. I could wait around for it to kick back on, but I could also just uh, kick it back on myself here. Where is it? i got to reorganize this page. It's getting a little out of hand. Normally it has like a minute or two delay before it starts up again after the switch is relieved of pressure, but um, I don't want to wait. <laughs> Look at that, it's uh, still swabbing. See, so, yeah, I really want to dial it in so the bubbles are right at the bottom of... Uh, Oh yeah, here's the Kato. You can just see it's just floating there. <laughs> Doesn't really do much. It just uh, well, it does do stuff, but 
It doesn't look like much. <laughs> That's what I guess I should say. It feels like a Brillo pad, though. It has a very unique feeling. It feels like a wire brush or something. Alright. You know what else I should do is in the skimmer here, I should now do if if switch. I could use the water high thing I made, but um, that reads if the feed switch is doing something, whereas for this, I want it to happen no matter what. So it already turns it off if the return pump is off, which should capture the feed mode, um, or just turning the return pump off for any other reason. But I sort of want to, I want it to always turn off if that switch is ever open, because if the water level is high, the skimmer is going to overflow. So, that should be a nice safety for it. So, if feed, if return pump is off, if the skimmer pressure switch is open, or if the height switch, the water high level, water level high switch is open, and then off. That looks good. Okay. Well, I've got a sufficient level of fail safes now. <laughs> I think, anyway. Give it a test again. Oh, look at that. I just flipped the switch up and the skimmer turned off. And there's the alarm. Let's turn it back off. So now the skimmer shouldn't come on for another minute and a half, so I don't want to make you guys wait, but I'm almost, I know it's working, so I'm not too concerned. But, um, cool. We have failsafe. <laughs> many, many failsafes. And of course, we still got the old uh, fridge light on the stand. You can see I get a nice little purple glow from that refugium lamp. Uh, now that I'm mostly done here, I kind of want to turn out some lights and see what it looks like. Turn out all the lights in here. You can see that purple glow. Pretty cool. You'll also see when you have it all dark like this, and you open the stand, the glass around the rim is all lit up. Oh, there goes the skimmer. So that's turning back on after I raise that flat, that float valve. But yeah, this uh, this setup is working well. So if that float switch on the top ever uh, ever rises, then. Skimmer shuts off, alarm goes off, a whole bunch of things happen. <laughs> so, this should be good. It's better than simply relying on the return pump because the return pump will still keep running if the water's high. Uh, so, yeah, no, this is uh, 
this is well needed. I mean, ultimately, I'll have uh, I want the Apex F was it FMM module, and that could very well replace that whole thing I made. But honestly, I don't even know if the FFM would have a water high sensor like this. It would probably only have a. Uh, it has two switch. It has two sensors to top off the water. If it ever lowers below those sensors, then it adds the water from the top off and then stops when the water is at those sensors. Whereas <sighs> in this setup, I do have one switch that's basically set at that level, which is the low the low switch. So when that switch is when that bottom switch is down then if there was something to turn to pump water and that would be it but of course right now there's nothing it just alarms but alarming is good alarming means I can pay attention to it uh, another thing I did I put a little uh, it's basically like a zip tie that has like a screw hole and that's how I did the cord for this that way the cord doesn't get trapped in the door and that, uh, that's been working well, actually. I might use those, uh, wire tie things. Oh, I'm getting tired. I might use those wire tie things in a few other places. But, um, you can really see that light is purple. It's crazy. Well, I hope the Kato likes the light. <laughs> I'm not really happy with the refugium light, or at least the bracket I got to hold it. Kind of sucks. I may still get something different. We'll see. All right, that's it for now. That's the update on the cube. You can see these guys are doing just fine. They don't mind my saltwater mishap, <laughs> although I really didn't screw it up that bad. I probably diluted it a little bit. Probably went down to. 30 parts per million instead of 33 or 32 or whatever it was and it's already back up again because I added some some salt water so from my concentrated bucket of salt water so now I guess I have the option of adding RO or adding premixed concentrated salt water from here or even a combination of both so if my salt was really low say I did a water change then I would probably just use this maybe mostly this with a little RO dilute it down a little bit but if it's just evaporation then I'll just top it off with RO and not use this hmm. alright well I think I pretty much did everything I could do I did uh, program that wave pump to turn on now so that is running now but it's running very low algae everywhere it's hard to tell because the coloration is kind of funky but it does look blue <sighs> I need to go to bed good night folks <laughs>